that she has with her, though. She has the original championship she was holding when she was stripped of the title a few months ago. Jessica Havoc believes she is the rightful champion, and some do agree with her, as she, Lufisto did not pin or make Jessica hey, Havoc hey, 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 hey! Time they get their job. I don't know how. They, I don't know how they're gonna do it, but DJ lines their pockets for a reason. I don't, I don't blame security for, for staying back. Jessica, Jessica Havoc is the most feared uh, female competitor in all professional wrestling today. Better listen to him. DJ Hyde wants something done, Jesse, you do it. I'm going to give you one opportunity. I will call the authorities and have you dragged out of this building, kicking and screaming. He won't do it. Who's going to bail you out of jail, girl? Oh, Problem is with DJ High. You know what the problem is? She was stripped of the title and banned for us. You want your job back? You people want to think people want to see you, huh? Different. 
Why don't you do like all these other people do and just suck my fucking dick? some credit. You want to be in the BJ Hyde Club? No. no. Okay. I'll, I'll give him that much credit. But I don't agree with the fact that he's toying with people's lives here right now. As me and him going sky high. Tope Suicida taking out Jessica Havoc. Both these women have had some hard hitting classic battles here. Jessica Havoc defeating Sammy Callahan last May. And Mia Yim defeating Greg Excellent in a TLC match a little over two years ago. And Mia Yim knows her way around. But, but Jessica Havoc is no stranger to getting uncensored and ultra violent. Yeah, Jessica Havoc was made for a place like the combat zone. Jessica Havoc actually made one of her first major moments here inside a War Games match at Breaking Barriers 2, which is available on StreamWSU.com. Well, she might be broken through a barrier if Mia Yim keeps this up. Look at the strength of Jessica Havoc. Oh, oh. Yes, These ladies are battling all around. We saw Jessica Havoc lay down leave Lang, one of the most respected women in American wrestling, and that's Mercedes Martino. Now she's got a handful of Mia Yim. Jessica have a brutality is the word that best describes her. She is a machine of destruction. I don't think she has any peers either when it comes to that. She calls herself the death machine, so. Oh, where'd she get that from? 
Mia Yim, though, fighting back. Mia Yim has a lot of heart. You're absolutely right. Mia Yim, as we said, no stranger to ultra violence. <laughs> she's fought Greg Excellent, one of the largest men in the combat zone. Yeah, she gave up TLC man. Yeah, she gave up almost 200 pounds to Excellent, still defeated him on that evening. Oh, but can she? Can she defeat Jessica Havoc, who, if she wins this match, will be getting her job back? And Emil J back here at the broadcast booth. Hey, Emil, did you win? Yeah, Emil, absolutely. Emil, Emil, did you join the BJ Hyde Club that he's talking about? I'm at the head of the line. You're gonna have to fight for that. With that fight in the ring right now, Jessica Havoc has a very limp Mia Yim in the master lock. And full Nelson applied. Oh, and look at this. Now elevating her so Mia Yim cannot try to fight out of it using her legs as a base. Very smart strategy by Jessica Havoc. Jessica Havoc using her height to her advantage right here. Havoc smartly knew she wasn't going to get the submission. Goes to her impact, high impact based offense. Tony S getting the death stare from the death machine. Yeah, you better beware with Jessica Havoc in the ring. She has won every championship in WSU. And right now, she's ready to break me and him in half. Look at the oh, pressure man. she's adding on to that backbreaker hold. Look at the way Mia Yim's just being stretched out, like you were saying, working over that lower back. The strength of Jessica Havoc as she drops Mia Yim right back down across her knee. Once again, pushing down underneath the chin, trying to get as much leverage as humanly possible. Jessica Havoc is a woman with no remorse. Oh, Mia Yim, where are you going? Trying. She's trying something, but the power, the power of Havoc once again. Two and only getting a two count. Hey, Mia made it clear that she's not doing DJ's bidding, but that's not how Jessica Havoc's viewing it right now. Jessica Havoc's viewing her as an ally of DJ Hyde. Going for a superplex, it looks like, but Mia Yim doing everything she has left in her to block it. Fighting off the much bigger woman. Ooh, hard shot right to the face. Might not have been smart. Oh! oh, but using her agility to her advantage right now. Off the rope she goes. Huge drop kick, taking down Havoc into a cover, you can see. But you know, yeah, with the referee's credit, he continued the count. But I still don't know that one second could have prevented Mia Yim from winning this one. Series of kicks to the legs of Jessica Havoc. There's uh -oh, that strength, uh -oh. though. There is that power like no other woman in this company has. Sit down, power bomb into a cover, and that, oh, no. Once it was nearly academic for Jessica Havoc, but Mia Yim <laughs> showing that she can take a beating hey. and keep going. Mia Yim with a lot of heart, but Jessica Havoc with that rage running through her blood right now. All she sees is DJ Hyde at the moment. And I know how hard it is to confuse Mia Yim for DJ Hyde, but that's all she has on her mind right now. And Jessica has had about 90% of this match so far. This crowd firmly behind Jessica Havoc right now. Jessica Havoc asking, who's the woman? I wonder if Nick's been asked that. He might have asked other people. <laughs> you are now the most hated man oh. in this company. <laughs> Jessica Havoc disgracing the face of Mia Yim with those boot scrapes. And she's going for one more. There's not much life left in Mia at the moment. Mia yeah, using her speed that time. Going upstairs, riding high as Mia Yim with a drop oh, kick. Man. Nice missile drop kick, taking Jessica Havoc off her feet. Mia's got to stay on her. 
That she does, just kicking her right in the face. Mia's got to stick and move. She's got to try to hit Jessica with something high impact and then try to create some distance. Havoc sending Mia Yim off the ropes, but Mia Yim, the head scissors taking out Havoc. Go for a cover here. Two and only getting a two pin. Mia taking that one second to post the crowd. It could have cost her this one. But oh, oh man. Quebrada fails. And the eyes taken out. Mia Yim with that huge clothesline. Turning her inside out, but Jessica Havoc with those death, that death look once again. I think she's wondering if she wants to dish out more punishment or end it here. It looks more like punishment. she wants to dish out more. Yeah. Ah, uh, she's just ragdolling her now. Pulling her by the hair. Mia Yim moving Whips the hands her. out of the way, rolling soul body. Here she comes. All she has is her speed right now, but Jessica Havoc has her strength. That brute strength. Well, there it is, oh. air raid crash. Victorious here over me and him. Because she is not our champion at the moment, despite her own claims. She's delusional. She thinks she no, can take. She's not delusional. She thinks she's a champion. She was never pinned. DJ took it away from her. She DJ Hyde just spent a couple of dollars and bought the company. That's what happened. You are not champion, Jessica Havoc. Despite the hugs from the fans. And Jessica Havoc, I believe, earned her job back here tonight. You tried like hell to get rid of me, DJ. I'm not going anywhere. The real WSU champion is here to stay. Dan Kelly alongside Jake Black calling all the action here tonight. Thank you, bro. And we're going to start off with our sassy Stephanie taking on Philadelphia's favorite daughter, Jenny Rose. Sassy Steph coming off a big loss to Tessa Blanchard, all because of Lefisto's interference. Sassy Steph tried to use the services of Rodriguez and Madame Roselle Rochelle, but it backfired on her. But right now she's trying to pick up a win against Jenny Rose, who was on quite a roll here at WSU until being defeated in a championship match. Yeah, against Lefisto, but it was not a bad showing at all. No, it totally was. Sassy Steph, maybe she's trying to show Jenny Rose a little bit of what she should have accomplished by taking the title from Lefisto and wants to take out a punishment on her for not being able to get the championship away from Lefisto. Well, Rose has a side headlock applied to Stephanie here, as Stephanie using those forearms to wrestle out of it. Now it's a waist lock applied, but Jenny Rose fighting out of it, rolling out quickly here. One, two, and only getting a two count here in the early going. That's what you gotta watch against Jenny Rose, those quick roll-ups. 
Sassy Steph, though, firing back with her own inside cradle. Now a bridge down, but once again, only getting a two count. And Sassy Stephanie, crucifix, rolling her up. One, two, and once again, only a two count. As you have to imagine, both women will like a chance at a title shot, well, once again for Jenny Rose, and for the first time for Sassy Stephanie, depending on who wins tonight's contest when Cherry Bomb challenges Lufisto in the main event. And now we're seeing Sassy Steph's mean streak coming out on her, raining down with those elbows. Not well liked here in the locker room. And right now, she only has two supporters, and that's Miss also Rodriguez and Mademoiselle Rochelle. She also had two fish hooks momentarily, but breaking the hold before the referee's count of five would have just got her disqualified. This crowd trying to fire up Jenny Rose, but to no avail as Sassy Stephanie continues on the attack and goes for a cover, but only getting a two count. Yeah, Jenny Rose, the local favorite here in Voorhees, but Sassy Steph's not gonna let that get to her. She's used to being booed. She's used to being hated. Suplex, going right for the cover though. Smart move by Sassy Stephanie. Look at the neck strength of Jenny Rose. Jenny Rose bridging out of that rather than kicking out. But Sassy Stephanie still in control at the moment. Grabbing a straight hand, double hand full of hair, chucks her in the corner. No, see it right there. She breaks right away, right at one. Maybe we're seeing a new side of Sassy Steph. Uh, I doubt it. Maybe you misjudged her all as, this time. As we've seen the offense interject themselves in most of her matches as of late. But right now, Sassy Stephanie chopping away at Jenny Rose. Jenny Rose a fire him back. Didn't have enough in her to go for a second shot before Sassy Steph cut her off. Yeah, Rose being sent to the corner. Stephanie after her. Back elbow catching Stephanie in the chin. And there's what I'm talking about right there. There's the office, holding her by her ankles, and there's Stassi Stephanie to capitalize. That is what the office is there for. That is what assistants are for. Yeah, you can't assist in a wrestling match unless it's a tag team contest, and we don't have a tag team contest scheduled at the moment. They have managerial licenses. I asked them earlier. It still doesn't allow you to interject yourself into the match in a physical way, and right now Sassy Stephanie is getting physical with the neck of Rose. Cranking on it and also putting her body weight on top of it. And there we go, driving her face first into that mat. Not looking good for Jenny Rose, into a pinning combination here, but Jenny Rose able to kick out before a three count. Great job by Sassy Steph though, stringing all that offense together, still not enough to put away Jenny Rose. You can hear this crowd firmly behind J-Row right now, chanting, let's go J-Row. But Sassy Stephanie quick to silence them, once again going for a pinning combination. But once again, Jenny Rose bridging out of a pinfall. Once again, using her neck strength to get out of it, though. Sassy Steph, though, might be raising the ire of J-Row, who's firing back on her. These ladies firing with forearm shivers in the center of the ring. And here's Jenny Rose now, look at these multiple Forearm to the chest of Stephanie, dropping her down to a knee, and Jero, huge flying clothesline. For more impact, she ran with it and fell with it, and now she's on a roll here against Sassy Steph. She's coming alive. Jero in the house of fire once again, clothesline, pulling Sassy Stephanie out. Huge DDT, and that could be it. We have a pin cover here, one, two, and once again, the office interjecting themselves into this matchup. What, you, what were you counting along with? I didn't see the referee. Referee go down for the cover, but right now... It clearly would have been a three count if it wasn't for Mademoiselle Rochelle and Miss Rodriguez. I think you're jumping the gun there. Sassy Steph's very resilient. A lot of times the person being pinned reacts to the count from the referee. And, and now she's coming behind with, here. And she's got her with a reverse DDT into the knee. And positioning with that knee. And right oh, back to man. the neck. Right back to that neck. She's been working over all matchup. Ridiculous. I think you turned you wanted Victoria. It's all because of the office. That was basically a three-on-one contest. No one could defeat those odds. Three on one. Well, these are the odds that every competitor is gonna have to face when they're against Sassy Steph. No one's gonna beat Sassy Steph.
Shauna's not very happy. I'm a cunt. That's what I'm supposed to do. Whoa! I'm a horrible fat cow. Oh! Because people tend to enjoy my ass. Survey says? Yes. I, I, I mean, I could just go with this the entire time. I'm good with this. We should have a twerk off. Show. We tried doing that at Beyond back in September. It's not all it's cracked up to me. Was it these two? No. Well, that's why. How about, a, how about a wrestling match? Any opposition? I'm down for that. I'm good with wrestling. Of course, Shauna, probably the best shape that we have seen her in since joining up with the WSU roster. Not that she's ever in bad shape. Always she looks just, great, as does Kim. Continues to get in better shape. Of course. And that's important, obviously, not only for appearance, but more importantly in my book, for your conditioning. So you have the win when you have to dig deep in the later moments of the match. And, and this isn't going to be an easy contest. I mean, no, this is going to go the not. distance. Kimberly has so much momentum right now in the independent scene, one of the top female competitors. And Shana obviously gets to compete all over the world. She's been on a number of stints through the United States. And we were talking about the uh, the buzz factor earlier on this evening, and uh, Kimberly Lee's got a ton of buzz behind her. That was a hell of a contest. And obviously she's going to be teaming up with Drew Gulak tomorrow. They made it to the finals of last year's Queen and King falling short to Athena and AR Fox. Mm, solid shot. Right to the midsection. Here comes Shaw. Oh, wow. Not pulling any punches. But neither is Kim. Oh, right to the chest. Shauna's down. Portugal's perfect punching bag. Whoa. Now Kimberly is showing her strength. She's got her position hoisted overhead. You know, Kim's been spending a lot of time in the weight room. 10 seconds, all of the blood rushing to the head of Shauna. It's a very similar sensation to when your foot falls asleep, except that pins and needles feeling is being experienced throughout your entire body. And then when you're slammed down to the mat hard like that, it just emphasizes it sucks. Excruciating. It sucks. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't try this Come anywhere. Don't do it to me. Or me. Do it to Emily. No, don't do oh, that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, my the lunch is lost. Get the words are out of my mouth. Shot is starting to get desperate. What a shot to the back. He's trying to... Oh, size her off. Getting a clear cut right across the face. Yesterday was draft day, and I think she's trying to make a 
Make a statement to the uh, NFL teams out there. She can, she can be a punter. Really driving that knee, another stiff shot. Now pulling away at the arms as Sean is looking to slow things down. Portugal's perfect athlete now transitioning into that dragon sleeper. Very similar hold to what Kimberly's tag team partner, Martin Drew Gulak, uses in that gulak. Since those do train alongside each other, Kim with a quick escape. Oh, oh man, Connor, right in the abdomen with that knee. That was a, a Takayama-style knee strike right to the solar plexus. You know, I think sometimes with Chana, you know, she's so beautiful. A lot of times you see her Dickinson. Dickinson right now preparing for his match later on with Lufisto. Going to be following the tradition that was started last year, that incredible contest between Sammy Callahan and Lufisto. But I think sometimes she gets so caught up in her own antics that I forget how good of a wrestler she is. She's really good. Absolutely. And you know what? This her affiliation with Chris Dickinson. I see a lot of Chris Dickinson rubbing off on Shauna. A lot of intensity. Oh, see? Kimberly clutching her chest, and Ashana taking too much time. Kimberly able to get her hands up. Oh man, and nobody throws chops like Kim. Oh! <laughs> what in the world? These two are going in. Say with so much at stake tomorrow with the Queen and King, I'm surprised to see them all landed on the line. And another stiff shot out of Shauna. Perhaps she will be changing her moniker to Portugal's perfect pugilist. Good lord. Oh man, again with those kicks. I'd love to see either of these competitors taking it to either Athena or Lefisto. Any combination of those four is money. Can't go wrong. Main events for the rest the of the year. Top female athletes competing at the top of their game right now. And Shauna made a mistake right there. She should have known. Oh, look at the angle. Just clutch in the corner. Using all that five count. She had that at a vicious angle too. I'll give Shauna credit. Kimberly usually likes to connect with the kick with her opponent by the ropes. Instead, Shauna going to the center of the ring. But she still can't get out of the way of Kimberly. Kimberly just taking it to Shauna like nobody else. Oh, the pump kick! Shauna right next to those ropes. Starting to see a veteran, a veteran presence out of Kimberly. She's, she's just commanding the way that she moves about the ring. Her confidence has risen sky high. In the past about six to eight months or so. Oh, no, now going for that Gonzo bomb. It's certainly gonna spell the end. Oh, kind of with that back body drop. Oh, caught her with that stunner. Leaping stunner at that. Great execution. Is that gonna be enough? The leg grapevine, the other one hooked. And Kimberly still kicks out. That was close. Shauna trying to collect her thoughts here. She, she looks like she is on the verge of a nervous breakdown. She's like in a trance. And now some of the fans giving it to her. She hoists Kimberly up to that top rope. Gonna think she's gonna be looking for that double stomp. She kicks Kimberly in the head. She's taking too much time though, arguing with the fans instead of worrying about Kimberly. Kim trying to extricate herself from the position. Yeah, we see Kim trying to fight her way out already. Oh. Shauna responds. Catches her with a shot to the chest. And another one. And she's able to slip out. Shauna now looking for that drop kick, maybe? No, it's getting caught up with a cross body. Huge cross body off the top. Talk about thinking on your feet. What about when your feet are on the top rope? Gonna give her credit. She was obviously looking for the double stomp in the corner. Instead, able to use her speed, agility, and balance to connect with that flying cross body. But you gotta give credit to Kim, too, who was still able to kick out. Absolutely. Really great back and forth action. 
And now Shauna, looking to apply this dragon suplex she's been using to finish off her opponents with. Oh, this is a vicious move. No, Kim. Oh, man, whipped her down hard. The momentum brings Shauna up to her feet. And Shauna oh. attempts to run her ahead. Look at the face of Kim. What is going on here? German suplex. Oh. And that one doesn't put Shauna down. She gets up to her feet. She's clutching her head. Kicks away at the arm. And again, going for that dragon suplex. That's going to oh. be it. Dumps her right on her head. Kim can't get eating these blows on her head like that. This is ridiculous. I've never seen anybody trade German and dragon suplexes. Shauna going for a kick. Misses Rice. with the Enza Curry. Now Kimberly's gonna hook up. Oh no. Oh, oh the Gonzo oh. bomb, that's it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this match, Kimberly. The action honestly it could have gone either way at any point you know something that i gotta say is that shauna did rely less on her antics and more on her wrestling ability unfortunately tonight kimberly just had her number of course one half of the wsu tag team champions gonna be teaming alongside drew gulak tomorrow they're gonna be receiving a bye to the second round by virtue i'm freaking impressed by virtue of making it to the finals last year. And unfortunately, gonna think that Shauna and Chris Dickinson, I mean, perhaps their chance is gonna think that they were the favorites going into tomorrow. But, but one can only question what the status of Shauna's neck is now after all those German suplexes and then the Gonzo bomb. Gotta be honest with you, Mr. Drew Kulak, these are two competitors that I've never seen compete before, but I think that's one of the things that's exciting about the secret show. We've got Jules Malone, who competes primarily up in Canada. Nyla Rose, up and down the East Coast. So I'm not sure where or when they would have crossed paths Prior to this, Isla Rose sporting some uh, Native American garb here, pr proudly displaying her uh, heritage. We see Jules Malone trying to uh, springboard off that bottom rope to try and get an advantage here. And uh, that did not work. She's being powered down hard to the mat. Let's see if Nyla Rose is gonna be testing her next strength. Oh no, instead bringing her up. Looking to uh, inflict more punishment, but we see Jules Malone kicking the hand away. Now trying to target the left arm, presumably the weaker arm of Nyla Rose. Now trying to go for that cross arm breaker, looking to end things early, using all of her body's weight to attack the one limb of Nyla Rose. She's got to get that arm hooked. Uh, doesn't quite have it locked. More on the wrist than the elbow and the shoulder. Perhaps inspired by some of the tactics from Isabel Sweeney in the previous contest. Looking to go after the arm of a larger opponent. Nyla Rose comes charging. You got to think she would have taken her head off. And Jules Malone, with all of his body's weight, can barely even budge Rose. Malone picking up some momentum here. Nyla just laughing at her. She says one more time, but holds up two fingers. Here we go. Whoa! Oh, third time's the charm! Be careful what you wish for, Nyla Rose! Oh, and a drop kick to the side of the head. Even with the leg hooked, only good for a two count. Waiting for her opponent to get back up to her feet. That could be a mistake. Yeah, kick her while she's down. Oh, Nyla Rose. That could have been a thump to the eye. Hard to tell from my vantage point. 
but we see Jules Malone favoring the side of her head. Nyla Rose firing away. A series of boots to the midsection. And now she's gonna be using those long legs to choke her. And risking disqualification while doing so. Trying to cut off the passage. You know, the air to the lungs, I don't know. I, think I will ring this bell so fast. You let me know, ref. <laughs> nice leg drop there, two, and uh, not enough. Didn't have the leg hook. Here we see Jules Malone getting choked on the roll. Plan is dead. Wasn't sure about the thump to the eye before, but I can see that. And if I can see it, everybody can see it. Now bring her to the other side of the ring once again. Just throwing her down to the canvas. Not even having to hook the leg, but if she did so, Jules Malone wouldn't have been able to bridge out from that pinning predicament the way that she did, shifting her body's momentum to get a larger opponent off of her in danger of having her shoulders pinned to the mat. Now Rose looking to send her for the ride from pillar to post, hard into the buckle. Oh, took too much time. And Jules Malone got the boot off. And a, this time, both feet. Rose still staggered. Oh, the flying cross body. I don't know if she got all of it. No, if she was able to catch her a little bit higher and come across the shoulders, that could have been enough to put her away. One, two, three. This match will continue, but below, excuse me, Jules Malone does have the advantage. Moment of hesitation, that could have cost her. Oh, that time we see Rose firing a shot to the midsection. Oh, and a kick right to the side of the head. You know, I gotta say, I like Nyla's aggression here, but she did risk being disqualified several times in this match. I wonder if she's gonna keep up the same strategy or go to something else. Here, hooking the leg deep, doesn't have the far shoulder cover. Only a two count there. Yeah, it's too late in the matchup to be making uh, careless mistakes like that. Now this time, better coverage on the shoulders, but again, not hooking the leg, as we see the leg and neck strength bridging out of the pin. Position her in the center of the ring, now looking to attack the knee. Oh! I'll tell you what, a leg is not meant to bend that way. What a time. Very painful move. <laughs> I don't know why people are taking that very lightly. We got a mean crowd here tonight. And this is a cover one, two, fighting through the pain, getting out before three. You wonder if Nyla Rose is going to be changing up her strategy instead of using her size and strength to toss her opponent around or laying some of those strikes if she's going to continue to attack the leg. Malone retreating to the corner. I don't know if she's going to like what she sees when she turns around. Rose signaling for a charging forearm. Oh my God, almost crushed her face. Once again, she did not have any luck in that corner before. Yeah, she definitely ripped some of her hair out too. Nevertheless, Malone fighting through the pain, a series of shoulder tackles. Oh God, the impact. Now the snapper, again using leverage to take down a bigger opponent, snapping the neck. And right to the jackknife, one, two. Oh, not even a two count, not even a two count. All right, so far in this contest, Who's your money on? I don't know, I think Nyla kind of lost her steam here. Jules Malone showing a little uh, resiliency. Yeah, but when you, when you have the natural ability, the size and strength like that, you can turn it around in your favor at any time. Just like that, that's exactly what happened right there. Now going tit for tat, connecting with a snapmare of her own. Oh, the drop kick between the shoulder blades. Tit for tat, huh? That's an expression! And that was a near fall. Rose pulling her opponent back up to the mat. She should have hooked the leg. She's been making that mistake multiple times throughout this bout. She's got her up across the shoulders, that fireman's carry. We see that, that grin and she takes her down with the Samoan drop. Shades of Tatanka? Fair to say. Every Samoan has ever wrestled yet, ever. And yeah, not an uncommon maneuver. Look at the sadistic look on her face. No, I don't agree with that either. I think she's got her beat right here, and instead she wants to inflict more punishment. Oh, and that was a mistake. Malone firing it with that form. And again. A third one. 
Rose having to use her upper body strength to keep herself propped up in the ropes. Now we see the elbow to the midsection. Got that headlock applied. And taking it down with the Bulldog. Is that gonna be enough? One, two, three. championship tournament continues on as Leva Bates with her daredevil I thought she was Hamburglar. Well, let's not talk about the Hamburglar right now. He's he's stealing another gimmick right now. Taking on the returning Veda Scott here in WSU. Who's Veda Scott dressed as? Liz Lemon? That's a good one. I don't think she's in the cosplay, though, like uh, Leva Bates is. Good. I can get along with her on a personal level, then. She's confused by the whole antics of the hamburger land. I don't want to get she can't see you. Yeah, she can't see without her glasses. Well, Leva Bates is Daredevil. Daredevil's supposed to be blind, so she can't really see either. The blindfold match without any folds here. Opening round of the Spirit Championship right now, about to kick off. Leva Bates, a fan favorite since making her debut a few months back. Beta Scott, though, looking for the handshake. She's all about honor, from what I hear. Well, she's offering this as a code of spirit. No, you might be a champion. I mean, really, you might be, right? Wow, look how nice. Beta Scott, look at her rolling her eyes. That's a twitch. Leave her alone. It's rude. That's the stigmatism she has now. Yeah, Veda Scott right to the headlock, though. Tricking Leva Bates into it. Yeah, after stomping the foot, now wringing the arm here of Bates. Yeah, nice wrist lock. Bates, though, able to counter it. Right into a wrist lock of her own, into the hammer lock, then leaping up into a side headlock of her own. She's sneaky, like Daredevil. Uh, well, Leva Bates really hasn't been sneaky at all right now. She's quite straightforward. She's in a wrestling match performing wrestling moves on her opponent. There's nothing really sneaky about that at the moment. What do we call that? She's a big Ben Affleck fan from her attire. No, it's uh, Matthew Cox. Not, not Ben Affleck. Party five guy, but she goes through the ropes right now that time, courtesy of Veda Scott. Well, we have to get a little serious here right now as these two women are very serious about becoming the new spirit champion. Yeah, but first they got to advance to the semifinals. Drop kick to the midsection, sending Veda Scott back into the ropes. She's got a little out of momentum too with that roll. Didn't catch all of her though. But enough to send her into the ropes and now she's way laying on her with those chops right to the chest. Veda Scott wants none of that. How could she do this if she's blind? She's the woman without fear. I haven't seen a blind person kick this much ass since JYD back before I was born. Oh, huge clothesline by Bates. But only getting a two count on Veda Scott. She's even covering her eyes. How is she seeing all this? Leva Bates is quite impressive, despite all the jokes we're making about the Daredevil attire. Leva Bates is one of the favorites to win the Spirit Championship tournament. As well she should be, you know. She had a great matchup with Cherry Bomb back at the eighth anniversary. Came up a little short, but oh! Oh my God! Running knees straight up to the midsection. Veda Scott's wishing she probably hasn't made a return here tonight. 
They just got all about the competition, able to lure in. I'll tell you what, Leva Bates is summoning the, the abilities of the Daredevil, Maybe she's as she is really impervious to pain here in this match. That's what Veda Scott just did. Maybe she should summon a Lariat. Might be more effective. We're having a standoff right now. Veda Scott's ready for a fight if you look at her. Scott off the ropes. Oh, man. Oh, into a Bulldog. Picture perfect Bulldog. Springing off the middle ropes, too. Now D daredeviling her. And just ground and pound, Mountner. But only getting a two count as Leva Bates able to kick out before the three. And Veda Scott this time though, staying on top of Leva. Bates now on the end of a beating from Scott as Scott vertical suplexer into another pinning combination. One, two, only getting a two count this time. Crowd rallying behind Leva Bates right now. Veda Scott didn't win any fans over here in WSU after her what she did to Rick Cataldo last time out. She was here. Oh, O'Connor Roll getting a two. And she really couldn't get in the, quite the right position there. And Scott able to kick out. Look at that big tackle taken down. Bates, and once again into a pinning combination. It's gonna do a lot of damage to Bates midsection. And that huge tackle bringing her down. He's grabbing her right by the ponytail right now. Not letting Bates get out of it. These women all are vicious, all in the hopes of becoming the next spirit champion. That's what it's all about. A lot of them in this tournament wouldn't have been the next in line for a shot, so you got to make the most of your opportunity in a tournament like this. You're absolutely right. Both women, women feeling the brunt of this contest. Bates, though, slugging away with those forearms. Sending Scott off. Kick to the face, sending Scott down. Leva Bates following up with a second kick. Scott just walking right into all those kicks. You can see Bates has been practicing martial arts to get to this persona, into a suplex. One, two, and Scott getting out before three. Northern Lights suplex, not enough to put away. Veda Scott, who's trapped in the corner right now with, with Bates charging. Oh, man. And bringing both knees across her. Bates isn't done yet as she's scaling the combat zone here. This is the uncensored oh. zone, but she's still able to land on her feet. Only through, because once again, Scott sidestepping. Scott might have lured her in, tricked her that time. Crashing into the turnbuckle, stunning her. Bates that time. Lorda and Scott got her draped over the middle rope and come with that big kick right to the side of the head. Might have caught her in the ear, knocking off her equilibrium. Scott, though, cut her off that time, draping her down with a variation of the stunner. Scott smartly pulling away from the ropes into a cover. Oh, I thought that was going to be a three count. I, yeah, I thought she was done there. So we're going at it for about seven minutes now. Yeah. Neither with a clear advantage. Look at Bates now, firing back. She wants to get to that semifinal round. Crack in the back, going for the quick cover smartly. One, two, and once again, these ladies will not quit. Leva Bates realizing being defeated at the eighth anniversary, like I said, she knew she was not in line for a title shot anytime soon. That's what this tournament gave her career new hopes. Veda Scott hasn't been in the comp or been in the quite a while either. Last time she was here losing in a tag team effort, knew she wouldn't be in a Spirit Championship anytime soon. That's why they're pulling out all the stops. Exactly right. Is Veda Scott placing Bates on the top rope and joining her up there? And what does Scott have planned? Looking her up, looks like it's gonna be an ace crusher, possibly. Head of talent relations crusher. But Bates firing away, making sure it doesn't happen. Evading that Super Dave crusher. Whoa, this is not good at all. Not good for Scott, a Pepsi plunge from the top rope into a cover here. One, two, and three.
Rexies. 